battled a little bit. They clear it, but it has allowed Magnuson to park all over the bumper. Will they be move under braking here in 211? Not this time, Brian. He looks to the inside to get a better run. And this is where Patrick Long seems to have had the edge a little bit, even with the extra 25 kilos that they had added once uh, the engine was determined to have the steel sleeves that they didn't like. And there, there it is. There it is. Magnuson gets it done. But can he hold it to the inside? Yes, no. Yes, no. Perfect. Perfect. with the double pass. Perfect. Get in there. Get in there. Oh. That was almost getting in there. I think he's getting way in there. Bergmeister with the big slide. This is a battle royale. Magnuson, the little terrier. The tall German, Jörg Bergmeister, in the 45 right in front of him. And now Bergmeister having to drive a bit defensively, that Dorsey. Was two drivers at the top of their game getting 100%. And as soon as Magnuson got in there, he knew. He knew he was not going to be able to hold down the apex. It was a good double pass. Jörg Bergmeister on the inside. They rubbed a little bit. That rubbing's not over yet, folks. Jill DeFerrin with about a one second lead over Fernandez. And we're not missing anything up there right now. This battle just too good to leave. Magnuson all over the rear bumper and Bergmeister really beginning to drive defensively down through the corkscrew. Turns nine and ten. Are the tires gone on that Flying Lizard Porsche? The mechanical grip of the Corvette in strong suit? Well, it looked like the, the, the Corvette had a bunch of understeer on it. I don't know if that's because he rushed the corner so hard and had that speed on there a little bit more than he needed to. Let's look at it through here. Oh, right there, pretty neutral. Get traffic up there. Get him when you can. Danny Binks, get them when you can. They've got that traffic in front. I like Danny as a corner man. He's pumping his driver up. He's getting them all up on his adrenaline right now. Which is, you know, they got less than five minutes. Look at this outside. move around the outside. And it's going to work. I think it's going to work. He can't hold it. Borgmeister takes the position back over, but Magnuson throwing caution to the wind will do anything to take this victory. And that was spectacular. That's what I'm talking about. Danny Binks pumping you up, man. Get your adrenaline up, boy. You're Superman. I can do this. Wow. Bergmeister. About four minutes left to go in this event. And can he hold on right now? Ian Magnuson in that Corvette. Very, very strong. That move, he almost pulled it off, Dorsey. That, I mean, in the running. Oh, wow, right on the outside edge there. That was a close. Off the edge of the track, and now prototype traffic. Going to split this battle a bit. Take a look at this. The 40 car in front, a bit slower. Magnuson made that decision a long way back. Before he even got close to that corner, he goes, I saw which way he's going. Now. I got one shot here. Now, this might have worked, but Magnuson left a lot of room, so he didn't get bumped right there. Watch right here. They give each other just enough room. And the, and the problem is those challenge cars, you saw the challenge Porsche in front, they accelerate very well off the corner, so th they didn't have the, they have the ability to use him as a pick. Now, the nine flashing through this battle as well. Scott Sharp works his way through. And he doesn't want any part of being of that. No, thank you, no. And Magnuson back looking to the outside again. You see the brake rotors glowing. Steel brakes on the GT2 cars. Carbon brakes on the prototypes. Those glowing brake rotors now easily seen here in the, in the day, as the daylight <laughs> phases, fades away. Well, he's got the high beams on to try to blind as much as he can your Birdmeister in front of the door. He's not looking in the rearview mirror anyway. He doesn't care about that. I think he's probably turned the mirrors down. I think they've got two laps. All they got. Right, come ahead. Remember when I spoke with your Birdmeister earlier in the race during his, after his first stint, he said, the car feels really good, but when I can get behind another car, I suffer a lot of understeer, so that looks like what's happening now. Every time that they get into traffic, he loses that edge a little bit and gives Yen a big advantage. It's about to happen right now, Jamie, as you said it. They're going to catch the Patron car. Both of them get by. Sort of. Uh, a little Sweetler. bump. A little bump there. Sweetler's going, guys, I'm trying to give you as much room as I possibly can. And man, this battle is intense. And the thing that's amazing to me, at least for right now, all the paint's still on the cars. That's what I'm saying. They're playing, they're playing well with each other. They're doing a really good job of giving each other just enough room not to take one another out. And that takes a lot because they're tented. There's Danny Binks. Yeah, two more swing. laps. Two more laps. Right, I was right. Two more to go, guys, and they're not going to give up yet. Watch for the outside pass. He's going to go for it here, I think. Oh, look at that. He's in the pit lane. What will the officials have to say about that? Magnuson uses pit out as the best the way to get by. Now get your mark. Danny Bink says nothing wrong with that. No, he's, and he's saying it is smart. What he's talking about right there is you got 
that maiden up. Get on your track. Get your turn ins part. Get your braking part. Take a look at this again. I knew he was going to go for it that lap. But I thought he'd go the other way. Here he is. Now, up into pit in. Now, now that's pit out. Now the question is, it's paved, but but is it's it? Illegal. What are the officials going to say about it? I like it no matter what. Danny Binks loved it. Johnny O'Connell loved it. You see Danny Binks in the helmet there on your right. Look at Johnny. <laughs> These guys, they, they don't quit, man. They get. That is a team. Binks on the radio. Hit your marks. Hit your marks. And now look. Yeah, now Magnuson's in front. I think he's going to pull away. I think he had the better car. Oh, the officials now. The transmission has come in. Let the 45 uh, go. This, oh, you shortcutted the course. Look, they got 50 seconds left in the track. 50 seconds left. Less than a minute. Less than 45 go. He's got to do it now. He's got to do it. He's got any chance of getting back by. He's got to make it happen right He's now. He's got to let him go and then try to get him right back. You're right on board right now with Fernandez. That is the 66 of DeFerrin in front. Four tenths of a second at the line the last time. Fernandez is running out of time. Can he get it done? The 45, the three has let him by, and now one more lap. Both these drivers don't really clearly understand what happened right there. They're being told, let him by, oh, go no. get him, go get him. You don't think they clearly understand? Magnuson knows exactly what he did, and he also knows he's got less than two miles to do it again. Bergmeister has a reprieve, but it's just about two miles worth of it. The leaders have taken the white flag. This is it, the last lap on board with the that's not sure where that is on the racetrack now as dark as it is but they are battling can he make it the whole thing right now that rests on can DeFerrin go without running out of fuel can he make this last time round? underneath the bridge was that out from underneath the corkscrew He's Fernandez right all over the back of him this is into the corkscrew Fernandez running out of time can he do it in turn 11 does DeFerrin have the fuel Remember the brakes on at the hairpin that would make That's it move where it happens. He's going to try it here again, I guarantee you. It's the only place it can happen, but DeFerrin pulls about a car like through the apex. You're almost there. Is the fuel, does he have the fuel to get it done? Right in front of him is the battle for the 45 and the 3. They're going to have another lap. The checkered flag falls. DeFerrin, in his final race, takes the victory, but the battle in GT2 rages on. And here comes Magnuson with the Corvette running around the outside. Will it stick there? They're going to hit. Oh, they, they bumped. bumped. <laughs> and now the three, Magnuson loses that battle. Drops wheels to the outside. That's not right, guys. It's not yet, Ron. He's got a couple more places he might be able to do something. Remember when Jörg Bergmeister was bumped off in the last lap at Sebring a couple of years ago, not having anything to do with it. He learned his lesson there. Was not going to happen, but Magnuson, he's not done. Boy, he's got very limited opportunity. The best place is going to be into that hairpin for the final time, coming on the pit straightaway. That's his good shot. Through turn five, turn six, up the hill. Seven, the little right-hand kink, then the braking for the corkscrew. He's got to stay right there, and I guarantee you he'll put a fender on him this time. Last lap. Out of the corkscrew. Through turn nine, the left-hander. A right-hander, turn 10, the very fast turn 10. Then the heavy braking, 4-11. If Magnuson is going to get the job done, it has right, to be far. right now. Too far back. Unless a dive bomb. Not going to happen. He's going to try the exit. Now oh, he bumps him, There's hits him at the exit, loosens him up. Bergmeister drives him to the wall, down the front straightaway, rubbing in the and wall, wreck. and he crashes it big. Oh, they're not going to like that one. No one is going to like that one. The checkered flag falls. It's great to see the competition, but enough is enough. And now tempers are going to flare on pit road. Bergmeister survives that battle. Magnuson hey. took the big hit. Boy, oh boy, that was a big hit. Jill DeFerrin has taken the checkered flag in his final event. Remember the last time he retired? It was the IndyCar race at Texas Speedway when he won the final event of the season and retired. He's won the final event of the 2009 American Le Mans Series season. It takes the victory and retires, but let's take a look at this. We knew this would happen. Here's Mag. He roughs him up a little bit, loosens up the portion. Now they're side by side. And York brings him to the wall. That's York, not good. York said, no, you're not going to hit me and loosen me up and take the victory like that. It they is. rub, and that's the hit right there. That was big. That is a very straight-on bad type of a hit. 
Look at this, right at you. They're up against the wall there. They're rubbing over there, and you can't play that game. Whew. You saw Yan with the bump there at the apex to loosen Jurg up, and he said, I'm not having anything to do with it. We told you there would be fireworks up until the checkered flag. You saw it, literally, the final round of the American Le Mans Series in 2009. It's been a great one.